Hello and welcome back to the entrance of thy words. We've been talking about growing as a Christian and we started by looking at the list in 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, you add to your faith, uh, virtue, knowledge, godliness, uh, temperance, all the different things there and it ends up with charity. And we made it to uh, taking a look at 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1, 2, and 3 and we talked about the fact that even in that passage over in Second Peter chapter 1, it talks about the fact that we need to abound. And we, we had, earlier we talked a little bit about uh, being partakers or participants and, and not just uh, bystanders. And uh, we need to partake of the divine nature and, and that will allow us to grow. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1 says this, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. So uh, some Christians come to church to hear what they have to do, and basically they're, they're uh, trying to figure out what's the least I can do and still get by with it. And that's obviously not the right attitude. That's not abounding. Uh, that's just trying to get by. And uh, none of us want that. You Really, in your heart of hearts, you save people out there that know uh, what the Lord has done for you. You don't want that, really. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, the Bible says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Um, you need to get in the game and abound and partake of the divine nature and, and really... Uh, take some time on a daily basis to try to figure out through God's words what you can do uh, to draw closer to Him, to be a blessing to other people, <clears throat> and to grow. I'm reminded of the uh, example that I heard another preacher give. Um, he, ha I think, he had taken his son to a, uh, a ball game to see Grant Hill play professional basketball, and. Um, he said they, they weren't on the front row, but they were within an earshot of listening to what was going on on the court and on the front few rows. And he said the first quarter didn't go very well, and the first part of the second quarter, I think it was, uh, didn't go very well. And uh, Grant Hill's uh, son, a very young man at the time, was sitting down on the front row, and uh, a play happened where it just didn't go Grant Hill's way, and the other team was, was doing very well. And Grant Hill's little son stood up and said to his dad, get in the game. <laughs> Yelled at him really loud. And there was obvious eye contact there between uh, Grant Hill and his son. And from that point on, it's like Grant Hill flipped a switch and uh, they, they did well after that. He had a really nice night there, scored a lot, had a lot of assists, and they ended up winning the game. So sometimes we just need even some of our youth in the church to look at us and say, you need to get in the game. Uh, people in churches that stay small, uh, I've seen this from time to time, they get discouraged because they don't grow. And sometimes there's a reason for that. Uh, sometimes it's just that the Lord has that there and has a small church there and that's the way maybe sometimes he wants to keep it. Uh, you never know uh, what the Lord's will is there. Uh, but if, if a church doesn't grow, my point is if a church doesn't grow, uh, an individual doesn't grow physically, uh, and if things just don't materialize like you would think they should, then people get discouraged. That's how it goes. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 uh, verse 3 says this, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. So there in the passage, he's giving them uh, sort of a commendation because, first of all, he realizes that they are their faith is growing exceedingly, and their charity toward each other is abounding more and more. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15 uh, give us some information that let us in on uh, the fact that pastors are in our lives to help us or cause us to grow. Pastors are not just given to you to show up and 
number one, perform on a weekly basis. It's, it, we're, we're not called to come in and give this great uh, oratory type thing where we give a great speech and then you judge us on that and, oh, he did really good today or he didn't do so good today. That's not the reason for a pastor. According to Ephesians chapter 4, a pastor is given uh, to cause you to grow. <clears throat> and we're not just information givers either. We should give out biblical information. Uh, but uh, we should uh, cause you to want to abound and to want to grow on a regular basis. Now, this information is good for both old and new Christians, okay? So if you're, here, if you're listening to this and you've not been saved very long, you need to grow. If you're listening to this and you've been saved 20, 30, 40 years, guess what? You still need to grow. And if you get to a place in your Christian life, I don't care if you've been saved 50 years, if you're stagnant, there's a problem. You need to grow. You need to grow and grow closer to the Lord. Always abounding, always trying to find His will for your life. What does Christian growth do? Number one, Christian growth in your personal life will bring honor to God. It will help other Christians to grow and Christian growth in your life will benefit society. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, used to, even when I was younger, uh, people used to trust Christians and respect them because those Christians put uh, effort and uh, thought <coughs> into trying to grow and to be spiritually, not just monetarily, and not just, well, I have a big house and some cars, so I must be blessed by God. That, that's not it. They put thought and emotion and effort into growing as a Christian, so that benefited society because society had a good example of what a Christian should be like. So, like I said, people used to trust Christians and churches and Christianity, and now, unfortunately, that's, uh, that's the opposite. That's gone the opposite direction. Um, if you try to grow spiritually, and, and your church tries to grow spiritually, then you end up with a group of people who uh, believe and practice that uh, lying is wrong, stealing is wrong, cheating is wrong, so on and so forth. Um, and so what's happened is we've had a, a generation of Christians who are not trying to grow spiritually. And so lost people have used that as an alibi not to get in church and not to get saved because they say, well, you see that there's these people that go to church on a regular basis and there's hypocrisy in the church. So they use hypocrisy to define Christianity and they don't want to have any part of that. That's sad, but it's true. Um, I have some great neighbors, but I wish all my neighbors practiced and believed true Christianity. And if they were all, if we were all trying to grow on a regular basis and be better Christians, then we wouldn't have to lock our doors at night. We could let our kids run the streets and run the neighborhood and wouldn't have to worry about that. But unfortunately, uh, that's not the case. Um, if, if people tried to grow spiritually like they should, people would be at work on time. They would talk right. Uh, they would be truthful, sincere. They would give holy judgment instead of their own judgment that would benefit themselves. Um, let's face it, there's no life when there's no growth. We need to hone in on trying to grow spiritually. Uh, and there's a lot of benefits for that. We'll pick it up next time here and, uh, and talk a little bit about fast growth versus slow growth. Hope you have a great day.